they call a pace. A racer says things like, Carlson's up to pace, or Graves is on pace for a stage win. Pace, a four letter word that combines power, technique, tactics, endurance, and flow. We use it as a synonym for the ability to race with the best. But pace has a price. Mountain biking is a sport born of adventure. Two wheels that allow us to go faster and deeper into the wilderness than any human powered machine before or since. Yet over the past 20 years, some argue that competitive mountain biking has become anything but adventurous. It's true that many of the sport's most prestigious competitions have gravitated towards the accessibility of easily televised locations. This is not one of those races. This is the Montebank Enduro. This is Chile. Chile is notorious for being high altitude. Pretty rough, rocky, dry, dusty, blown out. Yeah. So if you're doing an eight minute run at altitude, it just sucks you dry. It's gonna be really hard, you know, physical wise, because elevation and all that, so that just kind of, have you. I'm looking forward to it. This community doesn't judge you by what kind of car you drive or how much money you have in the bank. What matters here is heart, soul, and pace. Last year's overall EWS champ, Jerome Clements, has all three in large quantity. His main rival this season, like last, is arguably the best all-around competitor mountain biking has seen in decades, Jared Graves. The Australian is good on two wheels. Really, really good. Ask around. Enduro racing is supposed to favor more experienced racers. Riders who have racked up thousands of laps on World Cup downhill courses. Apparently, someone forgot to tell this to 17-year-old Martin Mays. After an off-season of Instagram updates and online speculation, what the pundits predicted has come to pass. Graves, first overall on day one. Instead of reaping the rewards of an off-season spent training hard, the first three stages have not been kind to body or pride. Curtis is in 49th place. As far as the health goes, um, it's a bit to be desired, um, but definitely not ideal. So, yeah, whatever. Just gotta man up and do what I can. At this level of racing, every hour of every week is planned for and analyzed after. A process where the work put in earlier in the year lays the groundwork for success in the here and now. Indeed, that was exactly the plan back in January. Here at the uh, first week of 2014, Mondays and Fridays are chill days, just recovery days. Have a 30, 45 minute spin, move the legs around, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have uh, gym days, strength training, have a big old workout, you know, two to three hours, big lunch. Wednesdays, uh, pretty good core workout. Try to get some shuttles in the afternoon. Most of all, have fun. You're pretty, pretty shattered from uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Go on, naughty boy. Go on, naughty the Saturday's gonna be pretty mellow, actually. 
and then Sunday we'll get back after it. Periodization isn't a new concept. It's been around since the 60s. Each training phase interacts with the next like the links of a chain. The final result, an optimally prepared athlete, physically, technically, tactically, and psychologically. At least, that's the theory. At this level, no one lines up on the start line looking to lose. But that possibility is exactly what every racer faces each time they put on the number plate. The possibility of failure is always a reality. The Enduro World Series rules recommend that a racer carry the tools to be self-sufficient on the trail. But when bad luck comes in the form of illness, there is very rarely anything in the racer's tool set that can salvage your race. Yeah. <coughs> Third overall on the EWS in 2013, France's Fabien Burrell came into the season fit and prepared. The veteran racer has both the speed and the fitness to truly challenge for the title. Unfortunately, Chile changed those plans. 562 hours of off-season preparation and training and testing gone, just like that. Diagnosis, fractured eighth dorsal vertebrae. His chances at the overall EWS title in 2014 are now all but over. On stage one of race one. A wheel looks big, but the section of tire that's actually in touch with the ground at any given second in time is surprisingly small. If you ride bikes, you already know it's called the contact patch three inches or so on the average 27.5 diameter wheel. Riders trust it for traction. Racers trust it with their careers. Um, tires set up at home. Something sticky and um, kind of puncture resistant. A medium casing front tire, lots of traction. Because down here, you know, obviously we don't get a lot of rain. It's so cowed, there's no traction. Uh, tire size volume is, it floats from like a 2.3 to a 2.2, front and rear. Go on, naughty boy. What you gotta learn is, bicycles now, they're very capable machines where they can take a lot, so you gotta rely on it. The faster you go sometimes, the easier it is. Way easier, it's part of like committing. Easier said than done. If commitment is a key to speed, right now, Graves is doing it better than anyone else. After day one here, an 11 second lead for Graves. Spending your teenage years around some of the fastest bike riders on the planet has apparently rubbed off on Martin Mays. First on stage one, first on stage four, first on stage five. Raw speed, undoubtedly. Fourth place overall here in Chile. The consistency to challenge for the EWS title, still to be determined. And this is where tactics come in. The race within a race. The ability to raise your pace as the conditions of the competition necessitate. Ride a little faster, trim three seconds in a stage, two seconds in another. Wait for your opponent to make a mistake. No need for flashes of brilliance, not even a need to win a stage. Ride consistently fast. A formula Jerome Clements has down to a science. So we have a first a winner of 2014. It's a blueprint his competitors will have to study hard if they hope to dethrone the champ. At the grassroots or against the best in the world, we race to test what speed each rider can maintain over a given terrain and how fast we have to go to beat those other guys. The win here gives Jerome first blood. 
500 points towards the championship, 500 closer to defending his title, 500 near to being able to call himself the best mountain biker in the world. And for Curtis, failure and defeat are not the same. You don't see a lot of Shakespeare quotes in our sport, but he summed it up pretty well. The results from Chile are not what I hoped for, not what I planned, not what I prepared for. Chile was difficult and dangerous and competitive and exciting and off pace or on. I survived at best. 15 hours back on the plane gives you a lot of time to think about things. Achieving the goals I set out for myself isn't impossible. I just haven't done it yet.